Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this third session of 45th Comprehensive Course on Echocardiography. We have with us a very intelligent, dynamic, dynamic person, Dr. Abhijit Chatterjee, to deal on this topic of M mode and 2D measurements. Dr. Chatterjee is based in Kolkata. He has done his uh, master's and BM in cardiology from Calcutta itself. And subsequently now he's working in Rabindranath Tagore Institute of Cardiology at Kolkata, both as a intervention as well as non-nasive cardiology. He specializes in echo and that's what he always talks of. Despite working so much in a non-invasive cardiology, but his still heart works for non-invasive. With this few words, let me hand over a mic to Dr. Abhijit. Dr. Abhijit, it's all yours. Thank you very much for your time and patience, and especially for this evening to join on this particular session. Thank you again, Dr. Abhijit. Thanks for your kind words, sir. So, uh, my, my topic of discussion today is M mode and 2D measurements. Can you hear me properly? Yes, Abhijit, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, measurements are the backbone of any echocardiographic examination. In order to have uniform standards worldwide, it is necessary to standardize the measurement. The standards that I have been following in my discussion is available from the website www.asecho.org and the downloads are free of charge. So I encourage the delegates to download it so that they can get a soft or hard copy. These are the guidelines for measurement. Let us understand the concept of leading edge and trailing edge. You know, every line in echocardiography is not a geometrical line. It has a finite width. The edge of the line that is closest to the transducer is the leading edge and the edge of the line, which is far away from the transducer, is the trailing edge. Now, M-mode measurements are made from leading edge to leading edge, and 2D measurements are made from trailing edge to leading edge. These are rules, but like all important rules in medicine and surgery, there are important exceptions. What are the techniques for M-mode measurement? The dimensions are measured in N-systole and N-diastole. And how do we know which is N-diastole? Look for the Q-wave on the ECG. If you cannot find the Q-wave, then look for an R-wave. And what is N-systole? Look for the peak downward movement of the interventricular septum. So this is a parasternal long axis view. You can very well see the right ventricle over here. This is the aorta, this is the aortic valve, this is the left atrium, and this is the left ventricle. If you put the line across the tips of the open aortic valve, then you get a tracing of the LV and aorta. Similarly, if you put, put it across the tips of the mitral valve leaflets, then you get a measurement of, of the mitral valve. And if you put it beyond that, you get the measurements of the left ventricle. So to start with, M mode of the out and left edge. So you have to measure from the leading edge to the leading edge. This is the R wave. So leading edge to leading edge, aorta. Then Left atrium is measured in, in systole from the top, leading edge to the leading edge. This is an M mode picture of the mitral valve. This is the facing of the anterior mitral leaflet, and the mirror image is the posterior mitral leaflet. Anterior mitral leaflet and posterior mitral leaflet. The DE amplitude this is D, this is E, this is A. 
F, this is A, and this is C. From D to the height of E is E amplitude. From E to F is the EF slope. And from E to the septum is the EP e point septal separation. These are of historical importance only. The septum is, me is measured in diastole when the LD opens to the maximum extent. The septum is measured from leading edge to leading edge. The posterior wall, again, is measured from leading edge to leading edge, septum from here to here, posterior wall from here to here. LV, internal diameter in diastole from here to here. Systole, from the lowermost part of the interventricular septum to the corresponding point of the LV posterior wall. It is not the reverse, it's not the highest point to the corresponding point. And you cannot draw it obliquely from the lowest to the highest point. You have to drop a perpendicular from the lowest point to the corresponding point on the posterior wall. M mode or the inferior vena cava. The cursor is placed about one to two centimeters away from the junction of the IVC with the right atrium along the long axis of the inferior vena cava. The change in dimensions during spontaneous breathing or sniffing important Everybody listen carefully. When you want to measure the respiratory changes in the dimension of the, of the inferior vena cava, do not ask the patient to take long breaths. Look at me. This is long breath. Don't ask the patient to do this. Ask the patient to take a short sniff. Look at what I'm doing. I'm taking a short sniff. This is short sniff. And this is what you can see on the, see? this is the result of sniffing. And you measure in the bigger diameter and the smaller diameter and see what percentage of collapse has taken place. The two being a measurement. Now friends, importantly, diastole and systole are both measured when the mitral valve is closed. With the mitral valve closed, the biggest dimension is the diastole. And with the mitral valve closed, the smallest dimension of the LP is a systolic dimension. Remember, do not take the diastolic dimension with a mitral valve fully open. That is not according to the American Society guideline. The LV wall thickness, internal diameter, and diastole and systole are measured just beyond the tips of the mitral valve. So here, they have measured the thickness of the septum, and then the, this is the septum, this is the LV, and this is the posterior wall in the asshole. Here, they have also taken a measurement of the RV. So linear measurement is 2D, again, I want to point out that in both systole and diastole, the mitral valve is closed. Take the biggest dimension, that is diastole, and take the smallest dimension, that is systole. Big dimension, diastole, small dimension, systole. And do not try to find the ejection fraction from the diastole and systole. Just make a mention of the diastolic and systolic dimension. The Ejection fraction will be discussed as the discussion goes on. The LV dimensions, normal values, LV diastolic diameter, 42 to 58. Systolic diameter, 25 to 40. The LV diastolic and systolic dimension should be measured and documented in every echo examination, but they should not be used to derive the ejection fraction. Such calculations are based on geometric assumptions and are incorrect. The ejection fraction is obtained by tracing out the left ventricle in two orthogonal views, such as the apical four chamber and two chamber. These are two orthogonal views. One is at right angles to the other. 
The calculations are done by the modified Simpson method. This is the recommended technique. Modified Simpson method. The LV cavity is placed out manually in apical four chamber and apical two chamber in diastole and in systole. The tracing should start from one annulus papillary muscle should not be deemed to be part of the should be deemed to be part of the LV cavity and not the wall. See what I have done. You start from one annulus, you trace the, the cavity and you end at the other annulus, joined by a straight line. This should not, not be a line covering the undersurface of the mitral valve. That is wrong. Join by a straight line. Take the midpoint of this line and join to the distal most part of the L. And when doing this measurement, the trabeculations are a part of the blood, remember. And there's a papillary muscle here. The papillary muscle is a part of the blood. Don't make this mistake. You measure in diastole and systole, in four chamber and in two chamber. And what is the normal ejection fraction? Normal value is more than 54%. The index of myocardial performance. This is the mitral valve Doppler pattern. And this is the aortic ejection tract pattern. The gap between these two is the isovolumic contraction time. And from here to here is the isovolumic relaxation time. So myocardial performance index is isovolumic contraction time plus isovolumic relaxation time divided by ejection time. Normal value is 0 0.39 plus or minus 0 0.05. The, the easy way to remember is that it should be less than 0 0.4. If it is more than 0 0.4, it may be a systolic diamond, systolic abnormality or a diastolic abnormality. You can also do this myocardial performance index with a tissue drop. The left atrial measurement from the plaque, from leading edge to leading edge at the level of the aortic valve leads. LA measurement. Remember, taking linear measurements of the LA is sometimes disastrous. Why? Because the LA is a three dimensional structure. Therefore, linear measurements in one plane is not accurate. Reliable measurements are made from two orthogonal views apical four chamber and apical two chamber. Now remember friends, you know, this is a box that I've got. Suppose you want to know the, di the dimensions of this box and you are measuring only one dimension. That is wrong. You must take into account this dimension and this dimension and this dimension. You must take into account all the dimensions. And this is how we do it. The measurements are taken in and systemic when the array dimensions are at their largest. Tracing should start from one annulus, go along the inner margins of the interatrial septum and LA wall and end at the other annulus. Care should be taken not to trace inside the pulmonary veins or inside the left atrium. The two annuli are joined by a straight line. The midpoint of this line should be joined to the most distal point of the LA wall, this is the long axis measurement. The two long axis measurements should not differ by more than five millimeters. If you have done it, then possibly your uh, I mean, image acquisition has been wrong and you have to repeat the measurement. The computer usually calculates the LA volume by the modified symptoms method. This is the recommended method. Alternatively, you can do it by the area link method. So here I've started measuring from one annulus gone along the interatrial septum and from one annulus interatrial septum inner aspect. I did not go into the pulmonary vein, nor the pulmonary vein here. I, I did not go into the left atrial appendage. I entered the other annulus and joined by a straight line, midpoint of this line to the distal most point. Four chamber view, two chamber view. They are done in mid systole when the atrial 
dimensions are the large. Aortic measurement. You take a zoomed view of the aorta so that you are less likely to make mistakes. And what do you do? Measure along the long axis of the aorta. The aortic root and the NPOD are measured in mid systole when the aortic valve leaflets are fully open. The sinus of valsalva, sinotubular junction, and proximal ascending aorta are measured in end diastole. So, this is important, you know. This is the annulus. Anything to the right of the annulus is measured in end diastole. Anything to the left of the annulus is measured in mid system when the valve leaflets are fully open. The annulus from the hinge point to the hinge point, internal aspect, and the LVO about 3 to 10 millimeters proximal to the line joining the two aorta, from the trailing edge to the leading edge. Now I have gone to the right of the annulus. They have to be taken in end diastole. And here there is an anomaly. This is not from trailing edge to leading edge. This is from leading edge to leading edge. The sinus of valsalva, which is the most dilated portion. The sinotubular junction, the next one, which is the narrowed portion beyond the sinus of valsalva. And after that, the proximal ascending out. This is sinus of valsalva. Sinotubular junction, and here is the proximal ascending aorta. These measurements are important to the surgeon who is going to do an operation on the aortic valve. Sometimes, when replacing the aortic valve, they replace a part of the aorta and they want to know whether the aorta is dilated and need to be replaced. If it is not dilated, they usually don't replace it. This is how we measure the proximal ascending aorta leading edge to leading edge. Now, when you measure the right ventricle, the right ventricle has got a complex geometry. You know, the inlet, that is the tricuspid valve, and the outlet, that is the pulmonary valve, they lie at different planes. And the interventricular septum is, is, not, is not a flat structure. It is concave on one side and convex on the other. So the, the right ventricle has got a descending shape if you see the, the middle figure, the diagram, see this is a crescentic shape of the right ventricle. It is convex towards the right ventricle and concave towards the left ventricle. And this is how we take the right ventricular measurement. This is a, see the lower one is the standard four chamber view. And if you angulate the transducer, towards the sternum, you get something that you see in the middle panel that is marked by red, that is the RV focused apical four chamber view. And all the RV measurements that I am going to show you have to be taken from the RV focused apical four chamber view. We will show that when we do the practicals in Delhi. You will have to angulate the transducer to, towards the sternum so that you get a RV focused four chamber view. And what are the measurements we take? You measure, see, there are three pictures on the top panel, A, B, and C. Look at the picture on the left, A. In diastole, you measure the right ventricular diameter at the base, which is just above the level of the aortic valve in the dilated portion of the RV. Then the mid cavity, RVD2, and finally, RVT3, the, the long axis from the midpoint of the, of the line joining the two annuli to the apis of the RV. See the middle panel, the RVOT. This is RVOT. And you can see the, the normal values there. This is the RV distal, parastal, short, short axis. And this is the pulmonary artery annulus. This is how you measure the RV wall thickness from subcostal four chamber view at the level of the tips of the open tricuspid valve leaflets. When you take the RV 
wall thickness measurement, be careful to avoid taking the RV epicardial fat and the RV trabeculation. The RV ejection fraction cannot be easily measured because of the complex shape of the right ventricle. So we have to depend on a number of surrogate measures. And how do we do that? The RV is traced out in diastole and system. The percentage change in right atrial area is computed. The normal value is more than 35%. There are other ways and means to assess the right ventricular sexrotic function. You put the line across the lateral tricuspid annulus, and during systole, the annulus moves up. During diastole, the annulus moves down. So you get tricuspid annular plane systolic expression, which is known as TAPC. Normal value is more than or equal to 17 millimeters. If it is less than the, this, then the patient has got a bad prognosis. You can also do, see the lower panel, tissue doppler at the lateral tricuspid annulus, normal value of this S wave is more than or equal to 9.5 centimeters per second. You can also measure the RV index of myocardial performance. As you did with the left ventricle Doppler, it should be less than 0.43 and tissue Doppler less than 0.54. How do we measure the right atrium? The short axis diameter, that is the widest portion, is less than 44 millimeter. And if you trace out the interior part of the right ventricle and join the two annuli by a straight line, the normal value is less than 18 square centimeter. This is irrespective of the body surface area. The inferior vena cava is measured along the long axis of the inferior vena cava, one to two centimeters from its junction with the right atrium. A long recording should be taken to see its respiratory variation. If the respiratory variation is not obvious, the patient should be asked to sniff and the change in diameter is noted. Again, observe what I'm doing. This is sniffing. This is sniffing. And this is long respiration. Avoid taking long respiration like this. The patient should not take long respiration. The patient should sniff like this. So the left is quiet breathing and the right is during sniffing. And how do we interpret the result? The IVC diameter of a normal person should be less than 21 millimeters. And during sniffing, the collapse should be more than 50%. If both, both these are normal, the RA pressure is about three. If both, is, both are abnormal, then the RA pressure is about 50. And if one is normal and the other is abnormal, it is taken to be about eight. This is how you measure the segments of the right panel. Uh, see the lower panel, the base. This is the anterior. Just wait a bit. This is anterior and this is inferior. This is septum and this is lateral. Anterior and towards the septum is anteroseptum. Anterior and towards lateral is anterolateral. Similarly, inferior and towards the septum is inferoseptum. And finally, inferior and towards the lateral is inferolateral. Now, this is for base and mid cavity. What about the apex? The apex is anterior, inferior, septal, and lateral. And there is an apical cap, the movement of which is not evident in echocardiography, but it is seen by perfusion imaging done by MRI people. So if you take the apical cap, there are 17 segments. Otherwise, there are 16 segments. So, what about the blood supply? This is the left main coronary artery, and this is the left anterior descending coronary artery. This is the right coronary artery, and this is the circumflex. The circumflex is a coronary artery of varying length. 
if it is a very big circumflex artery, then it goes to the posterior part of the heart and supplies the inferior cell. If it is a small circumflex artery, then the right coronary artery becomes big and that supplies the inferior wall of the heart. So to recapitulate, this is left main, this is left anterior descending. Similarly, this, there is a posterior descending artery. This is right coronary artery and this is left circumflex artery. Now, how do you know which is the dominant artery? The dominant artery is the artery which gives rise to the posterior descending artery. If the posterior descending artery arises from the right coronary artery, then we call it right dominant. Again, if the posterior descending artery arises from the left coronary artery, we call it left dominant. Now, how do we know which part of the heart is supplied by which coronary artery? Look at this. This is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And this is the junction between the right and left ventricle. Here lies the anterior descending. The anterior descending supplies two segments, anterior and anterior septum. This is the posterior descending artery. It may arise from the right coronary artery or from the left coronary artery. It supplies the inferior and inferior septum. What two segments are left? The lateral. The lateral is supplied by the circumflex coronary artery. This is a, a simplified way, but this is an easy way to remember. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, thank you, Abhijit. Uh, good, concise, and to the point uh, talk about uh, this particular topic of M mode and 2D echocardiography. And I'm sure these are basics of measurements. We have not really gone to details of measurements. So I'll request one by one and ask them a question. And based on those questions, then we'll take up those questions for everybody. <laughs> Dr. Balram Sharma, Balram Jonathan Sharma. Hello, sir. Balram, Hello. any questions? Yes, um, so to measure RV systolic function, we mostly look at the right atrium, is that correct? No, 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 we are talking of RV, so we should yes. not look at the right atrium. Look at the right no, ventricle. He's looking at R RV E prime. I was a little confused, sir. No, no, don't worry. Uh, uh, I Dr. Abhijit uh, is I'll going to tell you again. Uh, you, you people are beginners. Dr. Ishwar Agarwal, no. please silent your mic. Dr. Ishwar. Sir. Now, now look, look at this picture. This is please an RV focus mic, view. Dr. Ishwar. Uh, just hold on. I, there's a call from the hospital. I'll get back to you. Okay, sir. 